just going to go ahead and read um, 1 Samuel 25. We'll start at verse 2. Okay. All right. Um, we do, we're going to chop it down so that way everybody, um, everybody who, who's willing to be heard or willing to read can get a chance to go ahead and read and we can all break it up. I'm just gonna give Sister Sister Shanti a second to connect to the audio. She's connecting. Okay. Hey, Sister Shanti. Hey, hey Shalom. Hey. Shalom. Shalom. All right. So we're getting now started. This um this is just gonna be a reading on our aunt Abigail. Okay. Um. And let's go ahead and start at verse again. First Samuel chapter twenty-five, verse two. If um, Sister Aretha, you'd like to start off verse two to eight. Okay. And there, and there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal and the name of his wife, Abigail. She was a woman of good understanding and a beautiful countenance, but the man was churlish, churlish, yes, and evil in his dealings. He was of the house of Caleb, and David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did cheer, cheer his sheep, and David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young man, "Get you up to Carmel." and go to Nabal and, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in, prosper, in prosperity, peace be unto you, and peace be unto thy house, and peace be unto, the, unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there in Neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will show you. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes. For we come in, good, in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto the servants and to thy son David. Okay. So... Just right there to just, you know, summarize there. Basically, we understood just from reading that, that Nabal, N yeah, Nabal and his wife, Abigail. So Nabal was a, um, a wealthy man. He had um, a lot of, he had a thousand sheep, thousand goats. Okay, he had land. He was um, well known. And wealthy in his um, what do you call it? The things that he had. Um, in his possessions. Thank you. <laughs> um, also, so Dave, so he used to go and share his sheep for many, 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 many. Hi, welcome, Sister T uh, Tazar. Can you hear us? I don't think so. Okay. So, um, so yeah, David is approaching and telling his men, pretty much David was hoping that Nabal would uh, reward them with some much needed provisions that he had. He obviously had more than enough to go around so that he would reward David and his servants with much needed provisions since his men had protected his sheep okay and that's why he was saying 
you had no problem. They were they were not hurt. We took care of them. None of them went went missing. Okay, and you were able to tend to them on um in Carmel as you needed to. So he was just looking for some much needed provisions from him. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get Sister Sister Yushraya. Sister Yushraya, can you read from nine to fourteen? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. And when David's and when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all the words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There would be many servants nowadays that break away Can every man from, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna pick up at 10. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away even um, every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things. 13. And David said unto his men, gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Our praise is, um, can anybody break down what's going on so far at, from verses 9 to 14? So David um, sent his shares to ask for provisions. Nabal pretty much was saying, I don't know you. I'm not, you know, going to provide all of my hard work to you. And he exactly. denied it. So exactly. David's, um, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. So David's uh, men went back and told David exactly what Nabal had said and how he had reacted to them. Right. Um, so David got angry. And he's like, well, grab your swords. We're going to go forth. And um, some of you guys stay and some of you guys come with me. We're going to see what's going on. And right. so um, in the midst of all that preparation, one of David's guys who knew um, Abigail went and began, you know, went to meet up with her um, at that point. Our praise is. So what do we gather about Nabal at this point? He's a fool. <laughs> well, but besides the fact that his name actually means fool. Wow. Do we know that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <The same. laughs> fool. Yeah. He's very proud and arrogant. Exactly. Ex that, yeah. Uh, that's a big one because to come up to David Starbucks and, and to say something like that, you got to be real proud and arrogant. Because he's the king. <laughs> exactly um and that also says that you know he he doesn't respect authority you know you we wouldn't go on our jobs and tell our tell our um who, who you call in second to command the um to, to your boss you know what i'm saying the manager you manager. wouldn't tell your manager hey go go tell the boss i say i you know <laughs> you know so so yeah, his, his name means fool, but he's mean-spirited. Um, he's uh, ill-mannered, not polite. He's unfriendly and gr grumpy and not charitable. Okay, he's all these things. And um, that's not the kind of, of man we should be, when, if we're courting, W women, if you're courting, that's not the attributes. That's, those are not good attributes. <laughs> okay. Um, when we uh, courting, when we, we, even in our relationships, if we're married, we want a man that is the opposite. Okay. And yes, we know we started off in the world, but 
and, and even for ourselves, uh, we should be good natured, friendly, uh, we should be pleasant, polite, we should be kind and courteous, okay? Everything opposite of what her husband was. So if we're calling somebody right now that don't have these attributes, you need to just go ahead and look the other way. Mm. Give them time to work on themselves. And um, um, just to bring out the scriptures, Philippians um, 2 and 4 yeah. tells us to look on the things of others. And that's totally opposite of what the type of person the ball was and what he was trying to do. Philippians 2 and 4? Mm -hmm. 12 and 4? Yes. Mm -hmm. You said 2 and 4, right? 2 and 4. You want to read that real quick? Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 and 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. All praises. All praises. And and be um, what does that go with? Be not quick to credit someone. You know, mm -hmm. just because you know um, two precepts, <laughs> or maybe or maybe you know a hundred precepts, you still have to have the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You still have to walk in this truth. And so her husband wasn't doing that. A lack, a lack of respect, like Sister Tamar says, you know, um, com complete disorder. And the most high is about order. All right. So let's go ahead. If Sister, hi, Sister Sue. Hi, Sister Tizar. Hey, Sister Sue. Shalom. <laughs> Sister Noah, can you take uh, verse 15 to 20? Sure. Okay. All right. Verse 15. To the, what did you ask? Yes. 15. Yes. Okay. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. 16. They were a wall unto us both by night and day all the while we were with them keeping the sheep 17 now therefore know and consider what thou will do for evil is determined against our master and against all his household for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him mm. Mm. he's a hard man exactly mm -hmm. verse 18 then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and 100 clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. Verse 19, and she said unto her servants, go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. Continue. You, that's um, uh, verse 20, verse 20. Verse 20. And it was so. And as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. All right. Can you? Okay. So right there. Again, David came and he was just hoping that he would reward him with some provisions. And he went ahead and um, Nabal told them off pretty much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Like, it, like we read in verse 14. And um, again, one of these men went to Abigail and told him what was happening because David was about to go and, and uh, handle some business. Okay. It might not have been the right decision at first glance. But he was upset, so he was going to. He took his sword and he was headed over there. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, now, so he, once his wife heard about what was going on, of course, she don't want nothing to happen. Yo, no, my husband's about to kill me, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Again, stepping in like, like we're supposed to do and figure out how do okay, how do I, how do I help to fix this. OK, um, whether we get down on our knees and pray, sometimes you got to put you got to like she did. OK, take initiative. She she they were wealthy. They were wealthy. And um, I don't know if we 
read it yet, but she was so obviously she wasn't there at the time when the servants came and approached Nabal, you know, and 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 ask and asking for these um, provisions. She wasn't there, and a lot of the times you'll find that in a situation, um, sometimes um um some in some occasions, our men do not always handle situations the right way or that they might lean to their first thought. You know, you you you, you talk before you think, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But when you have a woman of wisdom that's beside you, your rib, okay, um, they can help to to kind of help you to see, help you to see, okay, let's think about this or help you to make that decision like we're supposed to do. We're heirs together, right? Absolutely. Okay, she wasn't there. She might have been able to talk some sense into Nabal, you know? Well, calm down. Ain't no reason to come out of character and get out of character. Let's go ahead and, you know, let's give these provisions. We got more than enough. She might have, she might have been able to talk some sense into him. Okay, but my point was she wasn't there. <laughs> she wasn't there. Okay. Um, on top of that, again, he's a foolish man. Okay. Uh, not pleasant at all, um, bad temper, okay, unfriendly and disrespectful, all right? Mm -hmm. so, and so they can't even talk to him in 17. Exactly, you can't, a man <laughs> couldn't speak to him, far less for a woman. And what I wanted to point out also was the fact that, you know, she, she, did she refrain from telling her husband the provisions that she was making. Now mm. people will say, oh, you know, that mean I could do stuff without my husband knowing. Not necessarily. It's just in this situation because he was a hard man, because right. there can be people in, in relationship with where it's like they're unequally yoked. Yes. And you're trying to serve God and the other one is a son of Belial. Right. You know, you cannot full-fledged submit to a man when you guys are polarized like that. So she knows what's the right thing to do. So in an attempt to save her house, she has to pretty much go around them. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad you I'm so glad you broke that down, sis. You said it better than I could see. I get stumbled <laughs> on my way. Yeah. <laughs> and and then on on the flip side, a lot of men would look at that like um, look down upon that like oh she made she made a decision without me. You know, mm -hmm. but again, that's a man without wisdom. If you're looking at it that way, because she went ahead, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you know, <laughs> when you're in the spirit, you're in the spirit and a man and a righteous man would be able to see that. Okay. Absolutely. And realize and realize, okay. Yeah. Maybe I she wasn't thinking, you know, right. What you did was right. Right. You know, and in some cases as women, we can make executive decisions when the head is out of order. That's exact, That's a pure example. If he's out of order and he's a son of a liar and somebody trying to kill your, your house or smoke your house and you have the ability in your hands to save your house. Yeah, not necessarily an executive decision, but kind of, well, taking matters into your own hands. I mean, it's, 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 it's that's not usurp, usurping authority. Because you're not disobeying anyone at that point. Because you didn't ask. You just make that executive decision. You right. didn't usurp him, but you had to make a decision, you know, without consorting or, you know, consulting him. Right. In righteousness. So. In righteousness. Exactly. In righteousness. Yeah. Nothing you can go on and, you know, do something worldly or something that, you know. You're not trying to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, sis. Oh yeah, I said somebody said in righteousness, and I agreed. It's not, it's not for you to go and do something worldly or wicked, you know. This is something like dire straits kind of situation. And can I point out a um, few things? But just so all praises for that because I did write here that she didn't tell her husband, but I feel like she also knew her husband. Yes. So True. by knowing your husband, it allows you that. She didn't go too far, and again, we don't want to get ahead of you know, ahead of ourselves in the story. But she knew exactly what she could do, right? So that her husband would not be upset with her because we know how the story ends. It wasn't 
necessarily because of her, because like it opened up in First Samuel 25 and 3, she had a good understanding, like Psalms 111 and 10 says. Mm -hmm. So we know she kept the commandments and she right. had a beautiful countenance, right. which means her demeanor. So he knew what kind of spirit his wife had. So it probably wasn't anything surprising that, oh, my wife will feed the homeless. She will give to the poor. Right. She'll right. Give to her brother in need. So I exactly. think she just knew her husband and that's why she made that choice. You know, yeah, what I mean? not that she was trying to overstep her boundaries, but knowing him and exactly. Um, but you don't. Well. But you don't think also in that in that in that situation, she also maybe didn't say anything to him because he probably would have. Uh, uh, right. That too. I mean, that's why I'm saying. I know it sounds bad, but she she had to make an executive decision for the betterment of her house. You understand and. It's like that sometimes because sometimes the head is a son of Belial. Just like it said. It gets y'all killed. It, so it said it. that. <laughs> situation it, like that, then, you, you know, you might take a risk. Yeah. I'd rather you be mad at me and we be alive. Right. Then, <laughs> you right, know what because, I'm saying? Right, because the, the book says to, um, in all righteousness, you right. know? Right, right. So... You know, how can one be mad at them? What one's this what what is this? It's actually said that. You know, this um this the it actually says that the son of Belial. Okay. So mm -hmm. we <laughs> so he all kinds of um worldly minded and just stand the most you can't you can't get to him with nothing, not even a brick. Right. The most I throw it at him, okay. Right. Um, let's go ahead and keep reading then. Um sister Timar, would you like to read twenty one to twenty seven? Okay. Now David has said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed, and all that pertained unto him. And he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of God of David. If I leave of excuse me, if I leave all that pertain to him by the morning, like any that pisseth against the wall. And when mm -hmm. Abigail saw David, she hasted and lightened off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said unto me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, Speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Um, go to when? Yeah, keep going to 27. Okay. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, reward this man of Bial, Bilal, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Exactly. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst sin. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal as a fool. Mm. And now this blessing which thine hand may have brought upon my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. Keep on. Keep on. Uh, no, that was it. Our uh, praise is this. So, so again, Abigail is intervening for her Lord's sake, for her mm -hmm. husband's sake. Husband not because she, not because she, you thought you saw an authority, not because she, you know, trying to be the head, but because that's her husband, and he didn't, she didn't want him to be killed. We've all read this story, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't matter how anybody feel about it. It's the fact of what is is what's going on here, and like um, like we were saying before, um, regard this man of Belial, Belial, okay? Mm. 
He, uh, <laughs> a foolish. She knew what she was dealing with. Exactly. She know, like like Sister Yeshua said, she know her husband. This mm -hmm. man is stiff neck in all his ways. But guess what? I'm a woman of the Lord, she says. And you're not going to quench my spirit. And guess what? Meanwhile, while you're being this way, I'm going to go ahead and pray for you and, and, and drop down and give these, um, what what she bring? These raisins, clusters of corn and all these things. That's all he wanted. Okay. Yeah. We go on a job, you know, we go on a job all the time and we obey the 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 the, the taskmasters and the, the managers and the you know um the the, the most high is about order, you know, as long as you're not sinning. There was no sin involved when he asked for a reasonable provision, you know, and she yeah. wanted to save her husband. So again, being able to be be led in the spirit, we have to be in the spirit at all times. Okay, this woman is of good understanding. Abigail, good understanding. Okay, if not, she wouldn't have got these loaves and all these wine and sheeps and all of this stuff. Go give it to, 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 to David and, and, and pray thee that, you know, spare him. Take this blood off your hands, you know? Sure. Uh, and I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but it, uh, he hearkened unto her. A wise man named David hawkened on to her, to her, a woman. Mm -hmm. So uh, no matter how old you are, okay, you, you being a woman, you're a vessel, you're a servant. So we have to be led of the spirit. And the only way to do that is continuously, continuously, you know, nurturing ourselves and the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. So we can be used, like we said in our last video, in our last discussion, can he use you for anything? He can if you're not in the spirit. True, true. This woman was of good understanding, intelligent, wise, and respectful, right? And kept her heart right before the most high. All right. Um, sister, sister Paar, look at you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed tonight. <laughs> oh no. We're gonna be up. We're almost done. Um, you want to read 28 to 33? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is rising, is risen to purpose thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies, mm -hmm. them shall he sing, sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of the heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Mm -hmm. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me, and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, has which has kept me from this day, kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. I'll For in very, I praise this. Oh, that was it. My mm -hmm. bad. Oh, you want to keep going? Okay, you in the spirit. My bad. <laughs> All praises. <laughs> So, so we see there, because again, David was about to go avenge his own self by his own hand. And she was, she was saying to him, you don't have to do this. Okay. The most high sees all, sees all things. I'm just summarizing. He says, um, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid. Um, certainly make, uh, the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Okay. Um, 
So David is listening to her. David. David, um, this woman was some of, of so much courage and full of wisdom, okay? So much so that, that David took her counsel. Took her counsel. That's what's going on right there right now. She was able to stop this man, this king, from going to smite someone else, take vengeance. Because, we, you know, we like to say, you know, and, uh, Israel like to take matters in their own hands, you know. But this, this woman was able to, we do it with our kids all the time. You, you ill-temper, just like, just like Nabal was. You ill-temper, you ready to go fight. You ready to, you know. Um, and just like David was doing for a second here, he was ready to go take, seek his own vengeance by his own hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she talked him away from doing that. That's counsel. Okay, and he and he what did he say? And David said unto Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee to me this day to meet me. Thank you for calming me down. Thank thank mm -hmm. you. For, thank you for stepping in. I didn't need to do this. The most high gonna have his way with, with Nabal. Like, you know? Yeah. He took her counsel. He humbled himself, took his counsel, because she was right. She mm -hmm. was right. Um, Sister Sue. <laughs> um, yes, I am. Can you read um, 30, huh? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, before Sister Sue reads, it just um, kind of dawned on me, like, you know, um, 25 and 3 says that she was good understanding and a beautiful continent. And the first half of this talks about her understanding. And now we're looking at her, her continence, her demeanor, um, you know, and the rest of it, how humble she was from that point. Right. Forward. So exactly. just, the two um, characteristics are kind of split, but sum up the whole story too. Right. Exactly. Sister Sue, can you read 34 to 40? Yeah. And it just made me think too before I read. Um when she gathered all the food together. You know, you know the saying the way to a man's heart is to <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I'm like she done buttered the man up, done calmed his nerve with some food. That's exactly why she sent she sent it first. Remember, she sent it first. Mm -hmm. Yes, before she went. <laughs> but she said, y'all go ahead of me. Take all this stuff. Go ahead with me. Oh, go okay. ahead of me. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> I'm telling you, that belly was full. It was like, I was tripping. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> all praises. Listen, again, like the repeat pattern in all, in all our discussions, we have to be, we have to cover, cover these bases, ladies. We got to know when to have this hat on and when to have this hat on. Sometimes you might need three of them on at one time, but all praises. The most high made us that way. Okay. All right. Th uh, Thirty-four to forty. Okay. Um. For in very deed, as the Most High God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that. Does that say pisseth? Yep. <laughs> okay, pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about 10 days after 
that the Most High smote Nabal, and he died. And when mm. David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Most High, that have pleaded the cause of my reproof from the hand of Nabal, and have kept his servant from evil. For the Most High have returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to make, oh, snap, <laughs> make, yeah. take her to him to wife. And when the servants, David, were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife wow because remember the precept saying uh none of them had committed adultery so at that point you can only leave by death mm -hmm. you, can, you can remember rem remarry at death and he and he was and he was ready because he like well shoot i got me a one of wisdom she beautiful she is beautiful she's is she <laughs> yes he did first huh <laughs> <laughs> okay, he takes <laughs> he know exactly who is it. But <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, but yet you notice in thirty six when it says they went to the feast. Okay, the feast of the king. The bow heart was was um, merry within him. He was very drunken. And what did she not do? She didn't go and have this conversation with him about, hey, I took these raisins, apples, these the uh, porridge corns and all these figs and start no um, contention because she know her husband, like Yeshua was saying. She know her yeah. husband. Me and trying to start no fight right now. He full on wine. And the book say, you don't... You were saying something, sis? <laughs> the book say you don't go you don't go looking for somebody that's full, full of um, full of drink. You, you're looking for something. You know, so she know well mm -hmm. to just hold her peace until all of it until the wine, uh, but it came to pass until the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabar, when he ain't drunk no more. Maybe I could talk to somebody, maybe, maybe I could talk to you now and tell you what's going on. You know, not while son, that's all, that's wisdom. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this while you're drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, he would have carry on. So mm -hmm. now he would just, he, I guess he, he was just shocked. But see how the most high deal with him, David didn't even need to. Go deal with him. The most high have something in store for our for, for the ones that come against us. Like it said before, like she was telling David. Mm. Like that this the counsel David took from her, being a wise man that he is. There's no reason to do all of this. Okay. Right. Let the so, most yeah. or so, so it say when she told him that that his heart died within him and became as a stone so he probably suffered like a stroke or something to where he was catatonic so this thing why, why would he have a stroke when she bring this to him Heart attack. <laughs> you know <laughs> this is crazy how he have a stroke because she, she just saved his life and he had a stroke Rem remember remember the darkness can cannot comprehend light. <laughs> That's all I could say. Yeah, he 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 was about to have a fit. Yeah, the darkness can't cool. comprehend light. <laughs> right. Okay, you did what? <laughs> wow. And the uh, the Most High had it already had things lined up. We never we don't know mm -hmm. what the Most High is doing, but all we gotta do is stay in the spirit. Mm -hmm. so if got somebody dealing with us the wrong way. Stay in the spirit, stay strong, stay blameless. Yes, it is hard. This road is not easy, you know, but we got to stay in the spirit so the most high, most high can make moves on our behalf, you know? True, true. And she, was, she wasn't looking to go depart and marry nobody else, but the most high made it so. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? They were unequally yoked, like you said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Unequally yoked. Um, you know, the, 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 um, you know, David was the opposite of her husband, good natured. These are some of the attributes we should be looking for if we're, if we're seeking a husband, 
or it, um, and trying to build up in our spouses if we're married um, and building up in ourselves first and foremost, um, good natured, friendly, pleasant, polite, kind, be courteous and respectful. And yes, okay. to the ones that have rule over you in all righteousness. Okay. Cause the most high is about order. Um, not quick tempered, not tempered, not tempered. Okay. And, and charitable. Okay. Patience. Her, yes. Patient. Her husband was not a gentleman. These are not things you, if you see, see, see these things in yourself or anybody that's around you, you got to evaluate something. Okay. It's true. <clears throat> and her husband, he was happy that he told him all. Yeah, yeah, and had a feast about it. <laughs> you, <laughs> that's not arrogance. That's the God of himself as a king. Yeah, remember we read where it says that your um um what's the verse we read when it says that you're um you headstrong and you're, you're wrong and strong. Yeah, you know. You can't, we can't, we, don't, we, don't, we can't be like that. The most high gonna handle anyone that, that way. Uh, whether it's us, whether it's the person, person that's nearest and dearest to you. Okay. Let's pray for them people, but let the most high have his, the most high gonna have his way. The most high gonna seek, have his vengeance. Aim for us to go put no, um, no extra hot sauce and nobody grits. You know. Okay. <laughs> We'll see me in tea. <laughs> uh -huh. I want to point out a, um, something about because I know you. Um, so David did get angry, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the difference between um, David and Nepal. David was able to stop his anger. He was able to control it. It didn't get out of hand, right? Um, well, I can't. I don't know if anyone knows that scripture that says. Um, I know there's a scripture that says anger, be angry and sin not, but right. there's another scripture that came on. I just lost it. But Nepal, he just stayed angry all the right. time. So much so this, it ended up in his death, you know, so there's a big difference in a controlled righteous man and one that's, that's unrighteous when they're angry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. sis. Exactly. But that's the thing when it says, um, <laughs> Correction is grievous to a fool. Nabal is a fool because he rejects correction. Okay. Mm. Maybe because it's coming from a woman, we don't know. And a lot of times that is the case. Or maybe because he just don't take correction from nobody. Nobody. Elders. Yeah. You know. But, um, and a lot of people don't like that word, you know. But it is what it is. Okay. Um, if I'm telling you, thus say it, the book, if I'm coming with you in sincerity and all meekness and all of this other stuff, you know, and you don't take it, you're a fool. That's what the book say. And, and, that, and that's the difference. Go ahead. Joel. And you have to, um, what I see is um, controlling the spirit. David knew how to control his spirit. Uh. And that's what the sister was saying. And yes. that's for a lot of us, actually. Well, <laughs> but that's the thing. It it took, it, it took, because again, if it wasn't for Abigail to do what she did, right? Mm -hmm. And to sit there and counsel with him. She got down on the knees and she was talking to him. Okay. Sometimes we like we said in our last video, sometimes it takes the rib or the woman, the sister. You know, even a brother, you, you know, whoever, somebody with really? wisdom. A child. A child will lead them. But like my husband brings out it all the time, brings out all the time the scripture that says, Can not one of you judge the matter? The even the least can judge a matter. All of you sitting here, none of one, none of one of y'all could judge the matter. Right. You know, right. Nobody has any wisdom to clear right. this situation. So um, so yes, he took he took um he was able to change his his thought process based off the wisdom she was giving him you know mm -hmm. absolutely and 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 that's where and that's where like he was saying um sister tim you know that he was able to to just flip things yeah you're right i mean when you're right you're right i want to the scripture says i want you're not going to take the wrong right he's a king though 
Right. Like he's not even a regular man. He's a king. He's a and king. He's to the wisdom of a woman. Exactly. So it kind of exposes and sheds a light on a lot of people today that feel like they're beyond listening mm. to the woman and they're not even a quote unquote king. Right. And, and it's not about woman or man. The fact that if you have wisdom, remember the least esteemed in the church, if you have a problem, you could go to the least esteemed in the church. The least esteemed. They don't have to be the one up there spin precept after precept every Saturday. Right, you know? right, right. The least esteemed. As long as you judge in righteous judgment, right? Mm -hmm. The least esteemed. <clears throat> and yes, she was of high social status, okay? High, high social and economic status because there was good, in, good with the king and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um but you gotta you gotta know when to hum you gotta humble yourself. Okay. Um so yeah, so Abigail she hasted and arose and rode up in an ass, five damsels of hers that went after her, and she went after the messengers of David and reading 42 and became his wife. Okay. Um Listen, we gotta be. <laughs> um, I I was precepting all of this. Came back to. Um, gonna just read this, and then we could, and then we could stop there. Um, if anybody have any other things to to, to add to it, but I was precepting this with Psalms. Uh oh, Proverbs thirty one. Okay. We we. Proverbs. I was precepting this with Proverbs 31 and verse 10. Hey, don't do them things. Come on now. Okay. This, um, this is what she was doing right here, is what I saw. She was doing uh when she went and when the servant came to her and then she said, oh, no, I got to I got to try to see what I could do for my household. OK, mm -hmm. but I, well, this is what I was precepting right here. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. OK, check. She virtuous. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. The heart of her husband dot safety do trust safely do trust in her. So he have no need of spoil. Mm -hmm. OK, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Mm -hmm. It was all all sorts of good. Okay, because she could have said, you know what, this man is unruly out of the spirit. We unequally yoke. Let me go ahead and let David do what he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. But no, she was in the spirit. Some of us, some of us, <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay, spirits. Yes. Okay. Um, she seek it with her flax, the working willy with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bring it food from afar. Okay. She rises it also while it is it is yet night, giving me to her household and portions to her maidens. She consider it a field and buy it it. Okay. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard and she girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. Okay. Um just to land back up the last video. This is not a next Dorian princess we're talking about. This is a Hebrew mm -hmm. woman. This is what we were bred to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. To stand up in the times of adversity and make sure, listen, no, no, did, did she, you ain't about to come, come to the household and kill everybody up in here. No, let me give you these asses, these corns, these raisins. Okay. Whatever I got to do. Yes, sir. We do it on the job. Yep. You know? <laughs> okay. So yeah, man, that's, that's what I saw. That that was powerful. Uh, one one other tidbit though, peep the fact that Nabal was named, and it seemed that he inhabited uh, inherited the the definition of his name. So death and life is in the power of the tongue. Be careful what we name our children. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they name him? That's the spirit. The spirit was there from Bob. <laughs> 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 when you name a child, they live after the spirit, you know, of the name. So, yes, yes, he was ve very, very uncouth. Okay, mm -hmm. um, those are the spirits we do not need. 
no. up in our households. Okay. No. So, you know, women, if we fight, if we fight against something like this, you keep up that good fight. You got to stay in the light and build up yourself. So you could be like Aunt Abigail here. Okay. And, and be used when you're called. Mm 